Welcome to IT Origins, an interview series from Gestalt IT. Each Thursday, we bring to you another innovator, engineer, and entrepreneurs in the field of IT and ask them how they got started. Today, we have the privilege to talk to Tomer Sharan, the co-founder and CEO of Dremio. Tomer, nice to talk to you. Likewise, thanks for having me on the uh, on the show. Uh, Tomer, can you give our listeners a sense of what Dremio is as a company and, and you know what kind of market you're in and maybe a little elevator pitch? Uh, yeah, we created uh, something we call a, a data as a service platform, um, really realizing that today, every time somebody wants, somebody in the company wants to leverage data, it's an IT project, right? It's an engineering project. Uh, you know, that could be go get me the data, run this query for me, build a report for me. Um, do this for me, you know, bring, I need these two data sources together. And that really is, is something that holds, holds companies back. And it's also something that IT and data engineering teams hate. Um, you know, they hate being in that kind of reactive mode. And so we created this technology and this, this product that's uh, open source um, and allows you basically uh, to, to offer your, your internal data as a, as a service to the you know, BI users, to business analysts, to data scientists, so that they can do whatever they want with the data. They can explore it, they can analyze it, um, they can bring data from different sources and, and do analysis on that. And, and so the system uh, kind of provides this interface that looks like Google Docs for data or Office 365 for, for data. And um, while at the same time, this uh, data ex- uh, acceleration layer uh, makes it so that you can query terabytes and petabytes of data and get sub-second response times. So it's a, a really new type of an approach to uh uh, kind of making data more self-service uh, for enterprises. So let's just dive right in. Uh, Tomer, can you give me your IT origin story? Uh, how long have you been in the field? Uh, that's been a while. Um, that would, that would uh, disclose my age, but, um, you know, I started <laughs> off uh, uh, really as a, I guess as a teenager, but, uh, you know, got my undergrad at the, the Technion in, in Israel in computer science and um, spent a few years actually uh, during my studies, uh, working at the IBM Research and then at Microsoft uh, as a software developer, um, eventually moved into kind of product management and uh, various leadership roles, and um, uh, and yeah, it's been it's been fun recently, and uh, more as uh, an entrepreneur and uh, and CEO of uh, Dremio. So, you know, in comparison to you know getting your started uh, in Israel, what is the the kind of the difference in the IT and tech scene? Because I think every, a lot of people know that you know Israel is this really vibrant um, technology and innovation hub, um, and and the same thing with Silicon Valley. Uh, but you know, can is there any kind of major differences that you've spotted? I mean, I know that's it's been a, a period of time, but can you give people a sense of maybe some of the differences? Sure. You know, I've been in the Bay Area now for uh, for about ten years, so it's been a while since I've uh, actually lived in Israel. But uh, you know, it, it's it's actually quite similar. I think you you have uh, lots of startups in in both locations. So a lot of people, a lot of entrepreneurial people, and with that comes kind of an ecosystem that makes it easier to start companies, and that includes uh, you know VCs and you know law firms and 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 all those kinds of things, and and just the connection with other entrepreneurs in the area. So. I think both uh, both the Bay Area and Israel, in a, in a way, are geographically small regions, right, with high concentrations of entrepreneurship and technology. Um, I think traditionally, uh, the strength in Israel has been on the uh, kind of the more technology-heavy types of companies, uh, a lot of cybersecurity, um, things like that. Um, although more recently, I think you see also a lot of uh, more SaaS companies and uh, and consumer startups as well that are. Uh, being successful coming out of out of Israel, and you know, in, in recent years, and maybe more than recent, but in the last, let's say, ten ten years, is um, you see a lot of open source, and that um, that that's both uh, influenced the kind of the the systems that we use in IT. So you know, uh, a lot of data infrastructure, for example, is uh, is open source. In fact, that's that's why Dremio itself is an open source uh, product. And then you also see that influencing also how we do software development. So now when you're building software, chances are you're probably using hundreds of different open source libraries and and projects that you're integrating into your application or using as libraries. And so it's really made software development orders of magnitude faster and more productive than, you know, in that previous era where I had a very, uh, it was kind of a very proprietary stack. And the only libraries maybe that I could use were things that came with uh, Visual Studio or something like that from, from Microsoft. 
to that point, um, even looking at Microsoft today, while, you know, maybe they're not, you know, putting out a ton of open source, they're certainly much more amenable to it. And if nothing else, they're not trying to litigate a lot of open source projects out of existence. Um, and so, you know, you can even see it within a company with such a proprietary history, maybe not adopting open source wholeheartedly, but definitely kind of buying into the open ecosystem uh, ideology for sure. I think Microsoft today is uh, is very much on board with that uh, with this new environment. In fact, you know their their recent acquisition of GitHub is is maybe the biggest proof point yeah. between that, right? Yeah, I think the company is totally on board with uh, with open source. You know, when you're using uh, Azure, and we use that a lot, many of our customers use Azure. You know, it's it's all Linux and based on open source technologies as well. Um, of course, they have Microsoft products too, but uh, no, they're very open to that. The trends, uh, the, the things that have changed, I, I see the other one is cloud computing, right? If you look at uh, what's happening today in this massive shift uh, towards the cloud and the, the, the things that that changes uh, across, you know, what software we're using, right? We see more and more people using uh, new types of databases and a lot of data being stored on places like S3 and uh, Azure Data Lake Store. And all of these are systems that are just provided as a service. People don't have to manage them anymore. So, I think uh, the those two changes, kind of the open source and the migration to the cloud, have influenced so much and, and changed the, the entire landscape. So, kind of on the other side of that, though, uh, what is the current worst trend in IT? I think there are a lot of challenges. I'm not sure I would I would describe them as the worst trends. I mean, clearly, the, some of the challenges that we have now is um, we are so kind of online and so kind of dependent on on cloud services and. And with that come all sorts of uh, kind of security and, and privacy challenges. And I think you're seeing that with all these uh, cyber attacks. And it's more increasingly easier to, to do damage online through the Internet. Right? You don't have to, you know, blow up a bus. You can you can cause a lot of damage and, and harm, uh, you know, through through networks now. And I think that's that's one of the challenges. It's uh, something that every company has to think about. And, you know, we think a lot about that even here in our business, when we think about you know running cloud services and uh, and hosting data in the cloud, it's uh, security is a key part of that. And you know, kind of a companion question to this is, what is the best trend in IT? Would that be kind of the the embrace of of open source, open systems, or would it be something different? Yeah, I think the embrace of open source and and the embrace of cloud. I think all of those have made it so that we can uh, move way faster than we could in the past. Right? It's all about uh, uh, all about agility now, and most companies, you know, really are are having to reinvent themselves. Actually, when you think of uh, uh, maybe that some of the technology players kind of invading other industries, right? The the way you compete with that is by becoming more innovative and, and more agile and faster moving yourself. And so, a lot of that comes down to how fast can you develop new technology? How fast can you take advantage of of the data that you have? Because often that's the most significant asset that companies have is is actually the data, you know, the data about their users, the data about uh, their customers and their suppliers, etc. And being able to capitalize on on that data is the is a massive opportunity and also a big challenge. Actually, that 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 is a, a big part of why we started this company is, is really realizing that uh, you know, we got to get more agile um, and self sufficient with with our data. And Tomer, where do you see IT going in the next three to five years, kind of near term future? Uh, you know, I think we'll see the same trends continuing. Um, I don't think we're, uh, you know, a lot of people talk about these new things like uh, you know, blockchain and, you know, VR and things like that, AR. And I'm not sure those are going to have a big impact on IT in the near future or maybe even at all. Um, but to me, it's it's the continuation of these trends and companies really focusing on on kind of their data infrastructure and, and the how do they how do they take advantage of their data how do they uh, get insights from that how do they leverage AI to uh, to do smarter things with their uh, with their data assets I think that's what so much of the focus is going to be in the next uh, three to five years while still having to invest a lot in you know newer and stronger security technologies um, as we talked about that that continues to be a big big problem. So, Tomer, do you have any book recommendations for IT practitioners out there? And what are you reading right now? 
actually not reading anything right now. Um, I've been a little bit busy recently. Um, but uh, a recent book that I've read that, that I would recommend is uh, uh, The Hard Thing About Hard Things. Uh, that's from uh, by Ben Horowitz, um, who uh, um, is now uh, you know, one, of the, one of the founders of Andreessen Horowitz, one of the, the well-known VC firms here in the Valley. And it's a great book because he talks a lot about what it was like being a CEO and an entrepreneur and kind of talks about the, the challenges along the way. You know, oftentimes when, when you, you, you build a successful company, uh, people on the outside think that it's kind of a linear uh, process, right? It's every day you grow by 1% and things are great and everything's you know fine. And, you know, the team's happy and, and everything's going well. Right. And I think he talks a lot about, you know, some of the kind of the near death moments and the, the, the sleepless nights and it just puts those things in a great perspective, right? If it was easy, everybody would do it. And it's obviously not very easy. And I think that book kind of gives that inside scoop for, for many, many people, especially those that haven't been in those shoes and haven't done it before. I think that's, it's just eye opening. Excellent. We'll have a link to that in our show notes, uh, at gestaltit.com. Uh, so thank you for that. Um, first computer you ever owned. The first computer I owned was the Macintosh, the one that had the black and white screen and the uh, the two and a half floppy inch floppy disk, uh, kind of in one one thing. That was actually the first computer I had, and it was great. I was actually a child back then. You know, my dad actually had one of those at uh, work, and he he'd actually bring it home, carry it home on the weekend, and I got to play, <laughs> got to play different games on it. And and you know, I had that uh, paint kind of application where you could do. Uh, create drawings and that, that was really fun. So I had one of those terminals before, you know, one, a, a green and black terminal and kind of textual, but, uh, but that, the Macintosh was the first computer I, I, I really used. All right. And what do you do when you're not working in it? When I'm not working, I, I actually enjoy sports quite a bit. So I, you know, I play basketball a few times a week. I come winter time. I'm, uh, I'm often, uh, in, in Tahoe, uh, which is our kind of our ski area in the winter. So I, I really enjoy skiing. Uh, I have four kids, ages 10, 7, 4, and, uh, and basically zero. I've been teaching them how to ski and, and, you know, we ski all sorts of things and, you know, go down double black diamonds with the kids and, and it's, uh, it's a blast. I, I really enjoy that. The fact that you didn't lead with being a father of four as what you do when you're not working, uh, uh speaks to your time management skills. So I applaud you for that. And, uh, how do you caffeine? How do I caffeine? I drink a lot of coffee. I think that's probably something you'll find common with, with a lot of entrepreneurs, but I really enjoy uh, high quality coffee. So, you know, things like Blue Bottle and um, actually here in the office, uh, in our office here in the Bay Area, we have uh, subscriptions for Blue Bottle coffee. We have another La Cologne coffee that's from Philadelphia. I, I just like those kind of third wave, uh, really nice uh, coffee. And mostly, mostly it's an espresso or a, uh, a cappuccino. Okay, I was going to ask if uh, if there's pour over French press, cappuccino in the morning, espresso in the in the evening. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's a good way to approach it. I like that. All right, and uh, who would you like to see sit down for the IT Origins interview? I, I think there's so many people out there <laughs> that uh, that would be interesting to hear their perspective. Um, I'm, I'm I've been working recently with Wes McKinney, who's uh, very well known in the data science community. He's the, the creator of some of the, the key kind of projects in, in Python, which data scientists use all over the world, millions of downloads. And I think he'd be a great guy to have this conversation with. Um, I know he's working on a number of kind of uh, really revolutionary projects in, in this space. So that, that might be a great one. All right. Thanks for the recommendation. We'll definitely have to reach out. And finally, we'll get you out on this. Any career advice you'd like to pass on to our listeners? I think there are a number of things that I, I like to give people in terms of their, uh, their careers. One of them is really about, you know, just over deliver in, in anything that you do. Take ownership, right? I think it's, uh, regardless of, of your role in a company, um, or what you're trying to do, whether you're the, the CEO or you're an engineer or you're in marketing, I think there's somebody who's uh, really hoping that you will take ownership of your area of responsibility, really own it end to end, whether that's, you know, identifying what are the problems uh, that exist or providing uh, kind of suggesting solutions to them or implementing solutions uh, and then actually over delivering. Uh, I think that's that's kind of the key to uh, growing the career is is really demonstrating that you can not only do what you're told to do, but do more than that and, and just care about things as if they're your own. 
And so that those are kind of the things that I generally recommend to people who want to uh, kind of progress their career and take on more responsibility and, and things like that. And Tomer, where can people find more information about Dremio if they're interested in learning more? Yeah, I think they can go to uh, just dremio.com. So D-R-E-M-I-O dot uh, com. And there's a lot of information there. And, and there's also kind of a contact uh, link that they're uh, welcome to uh, uh, reach out and uh, ask any other questions they may have. Tomer Sharan, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for participating in IT Origins. 